Let's do something fun to this beaver today. All right, so the owner would like an engine light. So when he opens up the back of the hood here, or I guess the engine, he can see inside his engine a little bit better. Now, Monaco Beaver did provide a compartment light. It is hidden right there. Now, in order to turn that one on, you have to go up front. You have to walk all the way forward and hit this right in the center console right there. You have to turn that on. Come all the way back again. Of course, this is when you're on the side of the road. And you're just trying to walk around safely back and forth. And you have to come back here again and turn that on. Now, on camera, that doesn't look like, that looks like a pretty bright light. But I can tell you, that's not a very bright light. Now, it's going to be on its own little uh, reel. So you can actually pull this guy out and pull it around. Yeah. I guess the bolt just blew. Oh, oh, oh. As long as the connection's still good inside the reel, you still have a tiny little flashlight, I guess, built in. I had one of these on my 80 Bronco, and it worked, I guess, okay in 1980. But this isn't going to work out very well for him. So he wants to be able to open up the hood, or the engine, and look inside at night. Now, because this is an engine bay... It's going to get filthy and dirty, so you have to have a pretty good light. And if uh, the only real places to mount is going to be the ceiling right there, and all it would do is cast light right here where you don't need it. Because even right up here, it would just cast light, and this whole thing would be in shade. Same with on this side. I mean, there's definitely places to put it. Just nothing that's going to help at night. But we do have this area right here. On the engine door itself so I'm gonna mount some lights right here and we're gonna put a switch right here that way it's gonna have light behind your head cascading onto the uh, the engine at least that's my plan so I couldn't figure out what lights to use so we are gonna hack these reverse tail lights these are just gonna be white and they're gonna fit on there pretty well I know I worried about it too. There's high and low, so that's why there's three wires. It's not a big difference. It's gonna be ground. Now, black is dim. See, that's not very impressive looking. And then, or, or green. Green is uh, high, so it's a lot brighter. So we have two of those. And then, because we need to put a switch, and the good news is I have all the power I want right there. I'm just going to use this switch, just a little toggle switch. I always like these because it makes you feel like you're a fighter pilot or something. That way, uh, you can flip that up. You can't accidentally hit that, and that'll turn the light on. And when you shut that, it'll turn it off, and it's a little bit more weatherproof. Um, on some of the Prevos, they'll actually have a little toggle switch, very similar to this, for the... Uh, the engine bay light. There's two lights, one in the engine bay and then one on the side compartment. And see on this marathon back here, if we go back to the engine compartment, besides the big old D Detroit diesel right there, let me see. You can see right here it says lamp light. There's a little toggle switch. You turn that on. And, well, that's supposed to be on. So, at least mine works. So, this is uh, going to mimic a, a Prevo bus. So it's already increased the value, right? <laughs> I'm going to show you my plan. So I'm just going to go ahead and mount this kind of out of the way right here. Drill a hole. So that'll be the only part sticking out. I'll drop it on the ground. There'll be an inline fuse uh, so that it's going to be fused. The wire will come basically out right there, up around. And there's already a wiring harness right here for the uh, engine door open sensor. We're just going to go ahead and follow that up, hook it up into there. And then these lights will just get met. Ow, ow, that was my head. Now because the wires come out of the back of the light, I could waste a lot of time trying to fish wire down there, but we can get three of these screws put in pretty easily. 
and it'll be mounted securely back behind there and you won't ever be the wiser and then I can just take the harness across this bar right there to the other side so I think that's a brilliant plan all right so we'll try to do this in uh, real time I guess as much as I can edit so I'm gonna hook up to the engine side battery so on a Monaco you have your battery boost battery charge solenoid so this is the engine side that's your house side on a Monaco in the battery compartment right here you'll have two battery disconnects so the top one's gonna be the house the bottom is gonna be the engine so if I turn that oh, let's go back <coughs> so I hook up the test light right now that's the engine battery has power ideally I don't want this uh, light to work unless the batteries are turned on so we'll make sure that that's turned off let me check for power here. There's no power right there. So this battery cable goes straight to that battery cable. And if I follow this one around, it's just gonna go to this breaker. So we'll go to that non-protected side of the breaker, put a fuse holder on there, and then the switch will go right there. The wire will come out down here. I'm going to go ahead and ground, make the ground, go to the chassis frame right there. Then we can route the wires all the way up here. All right, I always like to try to start with something simple. That way I get encouragement here so let's just go ahead and get the ground going let's shoot that back that eyelet on it right there or you can terminal put that on and let's get a self tapping screw right here it drills itself we go into the frame Go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna take a little uh, rotary rasp right here and get the paint off a little bit. All right, and I'll go ahead and put that. I'll aim it up. And just like that, we have a ground. Usually these uh, take about a 3 8 hole for these types of uh, switches here. So I have to drill a hole. Let me go ahead and lay it out. I want to make sure that uh, I'm not going to hit anything and short anything out right there. That seems to be about a good location right there, out of the way. Let's make a pilot hole. Right there. Then we'll just grab the step bit. And get a better battery. Ooh, almost there. Nice. All right, because of where I'm doing this, it looks like this fuse holder should hopefully be long enough. Yeah, yeah. So put another eyelet on this. A ring terminal. All right, I'll strip this back. Both sides. There's one. I need a little bit bigger ring terminal for right here. It looks like that'll fit. Okay. Now we just have to uh, wire this thing up. this 
here. So just doing this beforehand will make it a little bit easier to put them on. That way I'm not trying to put them on inside that little tiny little box. Okay. Not been difficult at all. Should be perfect. All right, so that's installed. Now we're just gonna have to uh, wire it up. Just gonna say that's usually three eighths. And when I said three eighths, I meant seven sixteenths. Of course, I already know there's no battery power here, so don't do this with battery power hooked up. Since we're adding a uh, circuit, it's up to us to make sure that circuit's safe. So that's what this fuse holder is going to be. There's no fuse in it right now. So if the harness I'm wiring gets shorted out to ground, it just blows the fuse. It won't cause a fire or cause other problems. If you're tapping into a circuit, you just need to make sure that you, whatever your circuit you're tapping into has enough capacity to actually... handle the load you're putting on it and that it's protected. Now there are a couple uh, spare spots here. I probably could have put a fuse in, but I think these are somewhat switched. Now I know these aren't switched, but that's going to be house side. And since I'm doing this, it'll just be just as easy. But I could have wired up to those. And then I have to figure out a way to hook into that harness right there. There you are. So that part's done. So that's all wired up now. I just have to uh, run these wires. I'm going to follow this harness right here. I'm going to get the lights mounted, run the harness over here, and then uh, we'll be able to test this thing out. I did already uh, close this. Uh grill or door to make sure that if I run the wires this way they're not going to get pinched and cut like scissors. If you guys remember this was low uh, or dim. Uh, white was ground and then green was actually high bright or bright. I know some of you might be asking why do we just cap that off. That's just because it's not being used. I don't want somebody to see a wire there wondering why it's not being used so it's just intentionally not being used. Of course the next question is why didn't I just ground a uh, this bracket right here because it's nice and metal. Well, it is metal, but I can't guarantee that it's a ground because it's only connected by a gas strut, which is going to be isolated because that's a plastic head. Uh, a couple pivot points, which will probably not be the best ground. I don't know if you can see, it's a little rusted right there. So I can't guarantee that this is ground because it has to go through that, and then that, and into that. So that's why I ran my own ground. That way I know that it has a good ground. So I got it all wired up and tied up. All the way to this side right there uh, before I actually get this thing going. Now, truthfully, I'm always tempting fate if I zip tie and secure everything before I test it all out, but I kind of had to do that to make this work. So I need to close this and make sure that uh, the that harness isn't going to get cut. So let me go ahead and see if I can't prop you guys up and you guys can watch. What do you guys think? Did you see anything? All right, you guys, look a little bit better this time. See anything that time? You had a better view this time, I already checked. 
So let's go ahead and put the, uh, let's try this thing out. All right, so I gotta make sure I turn the batteries back on. And just turn those disconnects back on. And then we come back over here. And then we flip the switch. And let's see. Oh, they're not working. Probably would help if I would put a fuse in, huh? Let me grab a fuse. So this is a one small circuit using two LED lights on it. Now, 14 gauge is usually rated in an RV world about 15 amps that it can handle. Now, not in the automotive world, they'll handle like 40. They're crazy. But um, I, am, I only ride up that. I don't need to carry more than uh, what it's necessary to carry. So I'm just putting a five amp fuse in. Let's see if this works now. Hey, look at that. That one's working too. So if I were to get a meter out, let's see what kind of amperage we're drawing. So let's see, this one right there, 0.2 amps. So not a lot of amperage. There's no reason to go higher than a five amp in this setup. And the cool thing is when you just close that, it turns the light off. And then this looks pretty easy to find in the night. And then you still have your awesome Monaco backup compartment light there. You have to go all the way up front to turn on. You'll notice you can actually start the engine from back here. Key has to still be on though. And uh, a lot of people get into trouble because they leave this in the rear position and uh, they can't start the engine from the front. Pay a lot of money to have somebody come back here and put a switch. What I'm gonna do is set you guys up because uh, it's kind of light outside. Though I think with the, the door closed, you might be able to see, or at least get a pretty good idea of how bright it is. Obviously, it doesn't seem that bright in daylight. So let me go ahead and uh, get you guys set up and we'll close this one time. See if this does anything. I have it turned off. Guess you guys are still there, right? Well, I think it's a lot brighter in there now, based on what I could see. I can't disagree, you guys didn't see a lot with that. You did see some light turn on. So if I were to close this back up, turn my light off, you guys can see how well that lights up that area, right where you'd want it to be lit up. Same with on this side. Well, that's the ground. So yeah, this is pretty good. All right, well guys, I have an incredible long list of things to do on this unit. Got this all put back together. I still likely have to change that guy out. So I won't put that back together. But harness all put back up over there. I think we're looking really well. <clears throat> of course, there's that big cat engine people love. C13. There you go. All right guys, so there you have it, installing uh, engine bay lights on a uh, 2008 Beaver Patriot. That was kind of fun. Get to think outside the box a little bit. Hopefully that serves the owner well and he'll be able to see stuff at night. Should cast quite a bit of light at night. Reverse lights are pretty good like that. Thanks a lot for watching guys. All right, we're sneaking back at night. We got a flashlight, we're breaking in. So we're gonna see what this looks like at night here in the uh, engine compartment. Glow in the dark paint in there? <laughs> Sometimes. Ooh, that's a good idea too. Ugh. Here we are with my light on. Turn your flashlight off. I'll turn that off. Seems pretty dark. All right, see if this does anything.
Oh, <laughs> you close it, it turns off, dummy. Well, it looks pretty good to me. You can see quite a bit in there now. Check that out. You can aim it too. So there it is. All right, Thomas, I'll come back here. You turn it off. All I have to do is turn the turbo button off. Ooh, nice. So go ahead and turn it on. There it is. That looks pretty bright in there. You can actually see the fuses and everything. Now we turn it off. Hey, Coyote. Oh, he's a good boy. 